What would Paris be like without its cafes? The atmosphere of Paris is best enjoyed in a cafe where one can just spend hours on end watching the world go by. On the left bank of the River Seine, in the heart of the Latin Quarter, there is the oldest cafe in Paris, where artists, writers, philosophers and politicians have congregated for centuries, creating and sharing ideas that transform the world. The founder of this cafe, called Le Procope, was François Procope, also known as Francesco Procopio, an Italian chef from Sicily. Belonging to a family of modest origins from Sicily, Francesco was born to Onofrio, a fisherman from a village near Palermo, and his wife, Domenica Semarqua, on the 10th of February 1651. Living in Sicily, in the shadow of Mount Edna, where sometimes winters were white, Francesco enjoyed playing in the snow. Surrounded by exotic fruit trees, an idea came into his mind. Mixing snow and honeyed fruit juices would make delicious iced sorbet. Francesco decided right then he would be making gelato, a great idea that would make Francesco one day famous. He spent his childhood growing up with both his father and grandfather working as fishermen. In his spare time, Francesco's grandfather would fill up his time building ice cream makers. Later, Francesco improved his grandfather's prototype and came up with a better machine for producing gelato. When Francesco was 20 years old, he decided to try his luck across the sea in France. With an idea for a small business in mind, he went over to France, where during the reign of Louis XIV, Paris was the place to be. He started working as an apprentice for Pascal, an immigrant himself, who was also trying to build a life in Paris. Pascal was a street vendor and owned a lemonade stand where he was selling lemonade and coffee. The impatient Pascal was barely making ends meet and in 1675 he stopped trading and swapped Paris for London in search for better business. Francesco remained the sole owner of the selling kiosk and diversified his small business. In February of that year, Francesco married Marguerite in the church of saint Sulpice, situated in Saint-Germain, where Francesco settled and worked. Their happy marriage would produce eight children, who would later work alongside their parents. As the main breadwinner, Francesco applied for a special license issued by King Louis XIV to sell flavored beverages and his original lemon and orange gelato. Francesco was thus able to set up his stall at the annual fair held in Saint-Germain, where theatre performances were shown to the public. He would sell his coffee and his delicious gelato to the Parisian clientele. His innovative idea caught on and his products would be a success. Before leaving Paris, his former boss Pascal called his kiosk a café. So, Francesco carried on with his business, setting up a new kiosk in 1686 in his neighborhood. Three years later, the Comédie Française located its performing arts building a few steps away from Francesco's café. Louis XIV was its patron and the French nobility would go and watch theater plays. From that moment on, Francesco's lucky star was on the rise. He transformed a poorly lit and cheerless premises into a stylish cafe decorated with French chandeliers, sumptuous mirrors and fancy tables. His cafe would become very popular with Parisians and they would become addicted to drinking coffee, turning Francesco's cafe into the first establishment of that kind in Paris. When Francesco was 45 years old, 
His wife Marguerite died, but he married again. Anne-Françoise Garnier, his second wife, bore Francesco five more children. At 51, the Italian changed his name, becoming François Procope, after acquiring French citizenship seven years earlier. With a new identity, Francesco decided to rename his coffee business as Café Procope. He would continue working for 20 more years in the cafe before allowing one of his sons to take over his father's business. Francesco would still enjoy attending the fair in Saint-Germain every year selling his famous gelato and coffee. It seems that as a true Italian, Francesco had a way with the ladies. He married again at the age of 66 to Julie Parmentier and he had another son. Francesco lived 10 more years before his death on the 10th of February 1727. Over the years and centuries, Francesco's Café became the place where authors, great thinkers and men of action met and shared groundbreaking ideas that would trigger some of the most significant events in the world's history. The philosopher Denis Diderot and his fellow Frenchman Jean Laurent d'Alembert had their own table at La Procope. They found there an inspiring place where they spent endless hours fueled by numerous cups of coffee creating the first encyclopedia of the world containing the enlightenment ideas that changed the world. Authors and philosophers such as Voltaire, Rousseau and Montesquieu enjoyed writing their work there, ruminating on philosophical concepts whilst drinking coffee mixed with hot chocolate and eating delicious ice cream. The American revolutionaries Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin reflected on the American Constitution at Le Procop. Robespierre, Danton and Marat sat at the table of the revolutionaries plotting the revolution of 1789 that would see France embracing the ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity and overthrowing the monarchy. Napoleon was another regular customer. When he was a lieutenant, he left his two-pointed hat there in exchange for coffee and drinks, promising to return and pay his debts. One could say that these two Italians left their own mark on France like no other Frenchman. The modern France of today is founded on Napoleon's ideas and principles, and Francesco made the French people become addicted to drinking coffee in the cafes scattered all over Paris. Later, during the 19th century, Le Procope became a literary salon visited by Jean Son, Paul Verlaine, Honoré de Balzac, Victor Hugo and Alfred de Musset. The café became an emblem of the Parisian intellectuals of Saint-Germain-de-Pré. Without ever knowing, Francesco would create a space for intellectuals and influential people to go to and congregate and debate on different topics and for ordinary folks a place where they could enjoy a cup of coffee and a scoop of gelato. In a nod to Francesco and his ingenuity, one can only say, Ciao Francesco, grazie mille! <laughs>